I'm Victoria Weinstein, and it is September 30th, 2023, and I was so excited about a production that I saw last night at the Trinity Rep in Providence of a new play called The Good John Proctor by Taylene Monahan. Uh, I just thought I had to come on here and talk about it and share some of my thoughts with you about why this is such an important contribution, cultural contribution, to all of the lore around the Salem Witch Trials. First and foremost, this play was written by a woman, Taylene Monahan, and it was directed by a woman, Kimberly Sr. It's a cast of women. And so we finally get, you know, centuries after the fact, we finally get a really woman-centered interpretation and report of what happened. And this is, it's so sad that this is such a revelation in the year 2023. There's a really particularly devastating scene between two of the characters where one describes seeing her mother have a miscarriage. And I don't want to give too much away. I think you should see this play. But the way that the girls are trying to figure out and understand what is happening in an environment where nobody's explaining anything to them. And also props to the prop people who did the blood effects because you did an amazing job. And the way that they don't have any actual information, but that they are trying to figure things out together as age peers um, in this patriarchal and repressive religious context, it was written so beautifully. One of the major achievements of this play is that the playwright has managed to re reflect the worldview and the reality of girls in late 17th century colonial New England, but use a contemporary idiom in her dialogue so that they sound like girls sound today. And therefore, she kind of shrinks the ensuing centuries so that, for me, we are able to see how little has changed, really. And there was a character, there is a character, a historic person, Mercy Lewis and uh, Lori Vega, was extraordinary in this role, who, when you first meet her, she's very crass, she's very sexually graphic, she's very sexualized, and she's drinking, and, you know, initially you think, oh, kind of out-of-pocket, wild child. And then for me, as someone who, again, is really interested in this time in history, I begin to realize, oh, she's not just, you know, a, a wild child, of course, this is a very traumatized, sexually exploited young woman, of course. And you think about the way that girls were kind of passed around from house to house as servants or, uh, you know, that they, no one had any sense of responsibility to them, servants, wives, uh, etc., you know, dying in childbirth over here and then getting transferred to another household over there, bearing a child out of wedlock here and being shamed. And this environment of extreme sexual repression and the way that men, they were also hyper-religious in that era and still today, project their sinful, evil nature onto the bodies of women and create this whole imagined reality where women are the repository of evil and then commit all of these crimes upon them uh, and then persecute them for that. Whew! I mean, this cast is so incredible at moving back and forth from playful peer uh, interaction to the seriousness and the profundity of what they are trying constantly to cope with and what they are seeing and what they are being accused of having as just inherent to their nature, which is, again, sinful because they have girls' bodies, because they are sexual, because they bleed, because they bear children, because they are midwives. There's one scene in particular for which I would like to really thank and congratulate the playwright, um, the designers, the cast, the director, and that is the scene where the girls go into the woods. 
Now, of course, for Salem in the late 17th century, for the for the colonizers, uh, the woods are really dangerous, right? I mean, there's a lot of bad stuff that can happen in the woods, whether it's animals or other human beings that are out to harm you uh, or just getting lost, all kinds of true perils in the woods. But then, of course, the woods also represent all the repressed material in the psyche, and it's where these people think that Satan is cavorting with the witches and all of this sort of thing. So it's really a, um, you know, a tab- taboo place to go. But historically, we know that the girls gathering in the woods was a kickoff, really, for what we now call the witch hysteria. Like, stuff happened in the woods that caused this agitation or psychological whatever and that led the girl, that led into this whole accusation thing that ended up being so very disastrous. So in this, in the play, what's done so brilliantly is that we see three causes, because we've always asked, you know, what really happened? Was it ergot poisoning? Was it mass psychosis? What, you know, what was it? Um, And so Amanahan, the playwright, puts together three different causes and intertwines them so beautifully. And one is a medical cause. One of the characters has epilepsy. So, of course, they don't understand what's happening medically. So it's, you know, having fits, having seizures is very frightening and it gets attributed to metaphysical causes and that sort of thing. And then one character is psychologically distraught for good reason and I'm not going to give it away here but I love the overturning I appreciate so much finally the complete overturning of the idea that Abigail was this little mini Jezebel um, trying to seduce John Proctor the girl was 11 okay so that was Arthur Miller's whole imaginary contribution to the lore of the Salem witch trials. And The Crucible is an amazing play. I love it. But let's not mistake it for any kind of fact. So you have a really distraught adolescent girl who has been subjected to emotional mess, just overwhelming. And you you got to see the play. And then the third factor is contagion. Just, I'm little, I'm uh, suggestible, um, and I'm watching my two beloved elder peers do this, and so I, I get myself all into it. It's just, again, finally, a reasonable and sensitive to women uh, interpretation of what I think, very likely happened in the woods. I imagine it must have been really hard to figure out how to end this play because the Salem witch trials, um, it never really ended. I mean, I live 10 minutes down the road from Salem and there is still a very active tourist um, interest in in the whole situation. There is currently at the Peabody Essex Museum a very fine exhibit showing artifacts and documents and belongings from the homes of the people closely involved. Um, There is still a very lively debate about what really happened. There are new insights all of the time. We are not done with this, but I really appreciated at the end of this play that the two of the women who were very closely involved get to have a conversation about it 15 years after the fact and that they are mostly talking about death and what how one of them died that seems really respectful of the again the lived experience of people in that time which is just that life was so much more fragile. And um, I wonder if we can't relate to that nowadays uh, in 2023, having lived recently and still living through a pandemic and an opioid crisis that is just snapping, snatching people off the streets, you know, left and right in a way that is 
really, really traumatizing, but nobody's talking about, and we don't know how to talk about it. And there's shame involved, and there's uh, stigma involved. And so there are some parallels and similarities there that I thought were very moving. So I, again, thank you so much for everybody involved in this production. I'm really excited to go see Becky Nurse of Salem in a couple of weeks. And everybody else, support your regional theater. They're doing important work. It is, this story is one that you can read about, you can watch movies about, you know, you can talk about, you can go to museums and see exhibits about, but seeing it dramatized is so very extra powerful. Thanks. <laughs>